I have mountains of scrap glass particularly clear, so I wanted to share this video showing how I use scrap clear glass in three different fused glass projects. I made my own frit using the thermal shock method and also random offcuts of clear tector. Bullseye glass was used, but this would translate to COE 96 glass too. To make the frit, I put tector scrap in a stainless steel sieve. I'll include a link to the one I used but any stainless steel one will do. Make sure the holes are small though, so the frit doesn't fall out. For the handle, I use knit chrome wire, which can fire to high temperatures. You will also need a heavy duty heat resistant glove, such as a welder's glove, or something safe to hook the sieve out of the kiln when at 300 degrees C. The firing temperature I used is as fast as possible to 300 degrees centigrade. If you want smaller particles, you can go up to 400 degrees, but going higher than this does not make any difference. Once cool, the glass requires further work to break it up into smaller pieces, but the thermal shock has fractured it and made it crumbly and very easy to break. The next step was to crush the fractured glass by stamping on it, so I put an old towel between cardboard and emptied the glass onto it. I then put the cardboard on the concrete floor and stamped on it. I did some more stamping without the cardboard, but make sure the soles of your shoes can take this. The frit was a mixture of sizes, but perfect for the project that I had in mind. I needed some glass pebbles for the first of these projects, which was the leaf dish. I found it easier to work on papyrus kiln firing paper on top of small ceramic tiles, which made everything more mobile. I glued the paper down and added glue to the top side of the paper to hold the frit still. PVA glue worked fine for this. And then this is the result after a full fuse in the kiln. Lots of little clear pebbles for lots of projects. The leaf dish used a bottom layer of clear glass and a top layer of spring and adventuring green, which is a streaky mix with a bit of sparkle. I drew a leaf shape template to fit my circular mould and then transferred this design onto the glass using a sharpie. The leaf shapes were then scored. They took a little bit of getting out because the angles were quite steep, so I did need to tap and run the score on the reverse of the glass. In my previous video, where I made a cow parsley bowl, I gave fire instructions for stringers slumped on this curve mould. The curved stringer made a perfect vein for the centre of my leaf. I also added some clear pebbles that are going to be full fused into the leaf. Mm -hmm. 
after the full fuse I added a second lot of clear pebbles and these are going to be tack fuse so that they look a little bit like raindrops. I really liked the effect after the full fuse. The glass is really sparkly as well. The final firing was into this round mould. Because of the shape of the leaf it didn't sit quite level but it did end up being okay in the end. And this is the result after the final slump with a few outside shots to show it off. For this project I pre-cut a 30cm clear glass base and selected powdered glass in Aventurin Blue, Light Cyan Opal and Steel Blue Opal. Be sure to use a mask when working with powdered glass. Working from top to bottom I sifted three layers of powder in Aventurin Blue, then Steel Blue Opal, then Light Cyan Opal. Then my homemade frit came into play. I carefully dropped pieces on top of the powdered base. When placing the frit it's best not to move the pieces too much afterwards as this spoils the final effect. and into the kiln for a full fuse. And this is the beautiful result. The frit pieces have diluted the colour of the powder and pushed it into the gaps making this interesting effect. I wish I had blended the colours a bit more so it was not so stripy. This could be used flat as a serving platter or slumped into a mould. I have an underwater scene in mind which will probably be the basis of my next video. I like to use powder migration bases and then decorate them. Green colours give a feeling of vegetation and work well with flower and leaf designs. But using scrap glass as the whole top layer saves a few pennies and looks great too. This final project was made on a pizza stone, which I often use as a portable kiln shelf. I will leave the link where I bought it below. I wanted to make two panels to slump into a stainless steel and ceramic S-shaped mould. The pieces needed to fit within the 25 times 12 cm rectangle drawn on papyrus kiln paper. Delving into my scrap glass stash, I cut various strips to approximately 25 cm long. I found some curved scraps and also cut some for added interest, making sure the very bottom strip was flat so it could stand up when finished. I also used some decoric glass on clear called Twizzle and cut this into thin strips. I played around with the glass until I got a design that I liked, making sure to leave some gaps because I want to fill those later with frit on the second firing. The decoric strips were laid last of all. And here is the result after the contour fuse. There's a nice bit of sparkle with the decroic glass. And I proceeded to add the homemade frit to the gaps in the glass. Then the second firing was a tack fuse. 
and here are the results after the tack views. Then the final firing was a slump firing on the S-curves and they came out really well with just the texture that I was looking for. A contrast between the smooth contour fused glass and the tack fused frit glass. And those are the three projects, making use of a good volume of scrap glass. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I would be very grateful if you would like and subscribe. The Grey Matter has lots of ideas for future videos, so by subscribing you will be notified when I publish something new. Thank you for watching and happy glass making.